Good morning and welcome to the Daily Share where we pray the word of God and bring it to life in our lives. Jeremiah 17 verse 5. This is what the Lord says, Cursed is the one who trusts in man, who draws strength from mere flesh, and whose heart turns away from the Lord. New Living Translation, this is what the Lord says, Cursed are those who put their trust in mere humans, who rely on human strength and turn their hearts away from the Lord. I find the scripture extremely liberating in so many senses. Um, it First of all, it encourages us to look to God. And yes, walking with God can be difficult because you don't see him. Look, looking, um, walking with God can be difficult because even his word is it's just, it's just a promise written in words. But this is where faith comes in. You're going to have to have faith in what the Bible says and, and hold on to that. But what we tend to do, myself included, and this is why I say I find it liberate, liberating because I've been in that trap of hoping that someone, a man of God or a woman of God, would really see me through a problem and hoping that they will pray for me and ask God to help me. And I don't know why I had this mindset, but I remember, as I've shared before, um, uh, going through generational cases, especially when our family, my family got attacked. Um, I spoke about how I first started experiencing serious, um, uh, you know, episodes of depression. And then, you know, over a course of two or three years, more and more things started to happen in the family, which eventually led to some um, mental health struggles for all of us, it, although they all manifested in different ways. And uh, I mean, I mean the, the most obvious one was the financial struggles, but there was a major attack and there's just no doubt about it. And I remember the, the times, the, the years, the, the Sundays spent hanging on in church, sitting in church and looking to a man of God to say something that would change things or pray or, or walk us through this thing. You almost expect people to be your mom or your dad, literally. And you, when, when I say people, I'm talking about men and women of God. And here's the thing, guys, there's just no way any single person, no matter how anointed they are, there's no way one person can carry a, a, a whole group of different different families in a church and, and do what needs to be required in the spirit realm for them. You need to understand that. And this is in no way, this is not to shed light or uh, sorry, shed, uh, sorry, throw shade or speak negatively of any men or women of God. Not at all. Actually, this is to sort of support the men and women of God and to say you can't rely on a man or woman of God to do everything for you, to read the Bible for you, to fast for you, to pray for you. And I say so because this is what I expected. I, I don't. I, I can't really say I expected them to do that. I didn't specifically ask them to say, Pastor, please fast for me. I did say, please pray for me. And I don't know why, but there was a part of me that, that was hoping that maybe something they could do would fix the problem for, for me and my family. And it was part of what really inspired half the people who go to church don't really go to church because they're seeking God. They go to church because they want to see a specific man of God and they're hoping that man of God will say something to them that will encourage them and strengthen them. Guys, if, if you live your life that way, you're going to feel hopeless all the time because guess what? Men and women of God are just that they are men and women of God. They are human beings who are serving God, who are uh, who have put themselves in the in the hands of God and in the will of God to serve and to support you. But that that's all they do. They are there to teach you and to point you back to God in the first place. They are there to show you the word of God and to encourage you to, to be strong in the word of God, not for them to take your problems and make them theirs. And unfortunately, a lot of men and women of God also fall for this trap and they mean well. And, you know, they, they genuinely um, that's and that's mostly because they've seen men and women of God before them do the same thing. But how, how just how much can you sustain that? How long can you sustain that? It's hard enough carrying the burdens of your own family. I always find a lot of the time, um, even with my own family, you know, just my family, there's not even more than 15 of us, right? Um, and I'm talking about my immediate family, not 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 going beyond just the immediate family, right? Um, just to sort of encourage my, my family to pray and fast along with me. Uh, it can be a challenge, but of course, that's not to say that, the, you know, I, I'm putting myself in a position where I tell them what to do. Not at all. It's not my place. 
God doesn't even force himself on other people. So you, we as believers cannot force God on other people. People get to choose. But not only that, you don't know when people, just because you don't see people pray visibly or fast visibly, doesn't mean they're not praying and fasting. So this is where you have to just surrender them to God and pray for them and intercede for them and stand in the gap for them and, and let the Holy Spirit do the rest with them. You can't, there's only so much you can do for people. And that's the same. We should also view the men and women of God that way. When you go to church, you are going to church um, to, for fellowship and to partake with other people. There is a benefit in being together as believers in one place, in, in a gathering. There's definitely that. And yes, the Bible does also encourage us to not forsake the gathering of the saints. But you cannot count on that leader um, to do everything for you, to fix the depression for you, to fix your child for you, to fix your finances for you. It's just never going to happen, guys. Take it from the person who's tried it. I tried it. It didn't work. And when I look at it, how can they? They can't. They have enough problems of their own to also deal with. What they can do is they can lead by example and show by example what it means to walk and hope in God and trust in God. And they can remind you of scriptures um, that that can sort of help you in this walk with God. And they can model to you and show you just how to stand in God. But also, really, guys. It's that sense of desperation that you feel when you're waiting for someone to give you an answer for your problem. I don't ever want to be in that place again. And I once was in that place where I was relying. I would text a man of God or a woman of God and wait. I'd keep checking my phone, waiting for them to answer as though my problems are going to be solved by this person. It was so stressful. It was so difficult waiting for someone. You know, these poor people, these poor men and women of God, they'll be out there busy with their schedules. They have meetings, they have conferences, they have this, they have that. And then when they finish, I expect them to then look at my message and respond and, and pray for me and encourage me. And guys, you, you can't sustain that. Even in a marriage, husband and wife in a home, you can't carry the burdens of your wife or the burdens of your husband. Um, every single detail of them. You can't You can't look to other people. This is what the scripture is talking about. Curse is the man who trusts in man. Even your, your, your beautiful wife, your beautiful husband, your wonderful husband, no matter how much they love you, they can't carry everything for you. You need to carry your burden and you need to take yourself to the Lord yourself. The Bible says work out your own salvation. You need to be spiritually minded yourself. And in the last year, I spoke about what it means to be spiritually minded. It means, first of all, to focus on the word of God. And it also means to be observing your dreams, to see what your dreams show you. And if your dreams show you anything negative, you need to cancel them. You may have to go on prayer and fasting yourself. You don't need anyone to tell you to go on prayer and fasting. Again, this was me literally only about just over two years ago. I, I used to text and say, oh, man of God, I had this dream. Should I go on, on fasting? And it's like... Why am I being like that? Why was I being like that? I was being too dependent. You can't be dependent. You've got to uh, be independent in the things of God. That's not to say you've got to think you can go out there and, and, and be and live by yourself and do everything yourself. No, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is you have to be strong. You have to work out your own salvation. If you see a negative dream or if you start to see signs in your life that something is not right, maybe you're starting to feel a bit depressed, maybe you're starting to see financial challenges in your life, go on prayer and fast in yourself. You don't need anyone to prompt you to do that. It should be obvious to see any form of resistance you see in your life. Pray about it. Fast about it. When you're about to go on an interview, you don't even need to announce yourself to a man of God. Just go on prayer and fasting. Announce yourself to God. When you have a business venture about to come to fruition, you're, you're, you're looking for a business partner, announce yourself to God. God wants you to come to him, not to men and women of God. Because what, what that tends to do is you can, without realizing, we can put these men and women of God in, in a place of... Uh, in the place of God, where you start to, you find yourself being being in idolatry. They become your idols and God hates that. And then you can be cursed. God doesn't want you to trust in men. He wants you to trust in him and to look to him. Here you are. The, the word of God is stating clearly, this is what the Lord God says. Cursed is the one who trusts in man. And here's the other version. Cursed are those who put their trust in mere humans including men and women of God. You know, just because they work for God doesn't mean you should put their trust in them. No, we can honor them. 
and respect their 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 position that God has put them in but that doesn't mean we should trust in them our trust should be in God God wants that trust to be in him he wants your focus to be on him he wants your prayers to be to him he wants all your effort to be towards him with the help and support of men and women and so we have to be extremely mindful of this but this takes some training you have to train yourself to seek God yourself. This is why I always say for me, the pandemic really was a time of a, a turning point for me because it taught me to pray by myself. All of us were stuck. We were all on lockdown at home. Men and women of God were on lockdown. Everyone was on lockdown. Everyone had to just, we were all faced with this pandemic. And so it taught me to pray and just seek scriptures for myself and stand on, on particular scriptures by myself. Um, and, and, and that was a turning point for me. And I started to see, and the freedom you will get from that, the strength you will get from that, the confidence you will get from that. The next time you get confronted uh, by an evil altar or by a witch or a wizard or a warlock or a sorcerer, you won't be scared because you now know what to do by yourself. And that's what God wants for every single one of us. Thank you for listening. God bless you. Have a lovely day. Goodbye.